Welcome to Dan ARG YouTube. Happy New Year to you, my viewers and my subscribers. I thank you now for the way you now take the join me, the share the video while they upload to this my YouTube. I pray make this year 2022 where we enter so better pass 2021. Anything where we put our hand go better for us and our good news now with the year around us for Nigeria and for the country where we did. The video where I bring come for now today, now APC leaders, where they call President Muhammad Buhari, make it declare state of emergency for Edo State. Make I live now, make we now here. What he make APC leaders, they call Buhari, make it declare state of emergency for Edo State. Edo is the only state in Nigeria today without a functional legislature. What is happening with the 10 PDP jokers? who gather regularly at government, Governor Basaki's office is comical. They gather to read sheets of papers, pretending to be making laws as a dose state House of assembly. We all know the true story. What Obasaki is practicing a dose today is a democratic taboo. And when a taboo is allowed to exist for too long, it becomes a tradition. If this taboo is allowed to be exported to other states, using Obasaki as a reference, it will endanger our democratic culture. Edo State is in a serious trouble. We therefore call on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a matter of urgent national importance to declare a state of emergency in Edo so that we can truly have a proper sole administrator. As we speak now, Mr. Baseke is demolishing the central hospital of Benin City with a view to replacing it with a motor park. The government says it has no plan for such demolitions two months ago. But if you go to Sapley Road by the hospital this minute, you will see what I'm talking about. We know the demolition is imminent, and we call on Mr. Baseki to stop or be ready for the consequences. There are several other reasons why a state of emergency in Edo is inevitable. Right now, Obaseki can no longer secure lives and properties of Edo citizens contrary to his oath of office. He has mortgaged the future of Edo State with the pension for clandestine borrowing of billions of Naira at home and abroad. He has no regard for rule of law and completely disregard all court orders except those in his favor. You will agree that the situation in Edo has found itself today is one where a single individual Mr. Obaseki, though democratically elected, has turned himself into a Muslim ruler and has regretted to himself the powers of the three arms of government. Many people in Edo are worried with the approach of Obaseki to the lingering slide of governance and brutal abuse of the constitution. It is in the light of the precarious situation Edo State has found itself under Governor Obaseki, which is almost akin to anarchy that the All Progressive Congress, APC, is calling on the federal government to declare state of emergency in Edo. Our call is predicated on the fact that Mr. Basaki would rather prefer to be a sole administrator of Edo state rather than a democratically elected governor. With a state of emergency, his present disposition towards governance will be legitimized. He will not need a legislature, cabinet, or even local government chairman to function. Insecurity. First, let me tell you that as governor, Mr. Bataki, who claimed he spent two billion on the security trust fund a few months ago, has so far been unable to protect the lives of Edo people. With daily cases of kidnappings and killings on the Bini Eho Aochi Road. Fear and insecurity have become the order of the day in Edo, yet he gets 800 million naira monthly as security vote. For such an amount, he is still unable to mobilize security agencies in the state to fight criminality. Even the volunteer local neighborhood watch or state vigilante corps are not left out. In all cases, they are totally disenchanted, being poorly mobilized. Loans. Mr. Basaki has perfected the art of taking clandestine loans from every available source without any plan to repay them and thereby mortgaging the future of Edo State. So soon 
after he took the 25 billion loan recently to finance the 2021 budget from the capital market. He went for another 18 billion loan from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The state's indebtedness has just elevated it to the second most indebted state in the country. A do state government, under Mr. Baseki, now specializes in giving vague and nebulous rationale when taking these loans. Yet, there are critical sectors of the local economy into which these loans ought to be channeled. That the Doe people are tired of many white elephant projects which Mr. Baseki has adopted as a conduit pipe to drain public fund is a cause for concern. Without the legislature, a Doe people are in dark about what are the loans being collected for. There is no due process and unborn adult children are, on, are assured of spending eternity repaying these loans. The rule of law. A those state has a governor who does not have an altar of respect for the judicial arm of government, although he regularly runs to court on the most frivolous excuses. He chooses which order to obey and disregard the rest, even when they are in the overall interest of Edo people. Mr. Basaki paid deaf ears to several court orders, restoring elected local government councils who he violently removed from their offices. Individual homes and private properties are being demolished, and the sea of O's of prominent Edo indigents perceived as political adversaries are being revoked. As you are aware, Governor Basaki spent all the days of his first year of his second term in office playing politics and neglecting governance. To date, he has not been able to form and appoint a full cabinet. Today, he is ignorant of the fact that no single traffic light is functioning anywhere in the state. No street light anywhere. The King Square that used to be realization center for use on weekends with the beautiful water fountain is now a natural habitat for rodents and reptiles. Mr. Basaki and his PDP administration has taken Edo back to the 18th century. Where did we get it wrong? Here is a governor who stuck in trade five years in office instead of signing or entry into MOUs, partnership and agreement with individuals and organizations, foreign and local. It is a government of MOU by MOU and for MOU. For a man leaving office in three years, Mr. Baseki recently proposed a 30-year development plan for the state. Yet, by 2050, many would have forgotten if he ever was the governor in Benin City. His MOU yielded the stillborn industrial park that he brought the vice president of this country, Mr. Yemi Osimbajo, to commission five years ago. With a spurious claim of securing a $200 million investment for the park, Today, it is a haven of wild animals. The only sign of the park is the giant dilapidating bee board announcing the governor's short-sightedness. There is no single industrial location, and there is no sign that any will come soon to this calm of a multi-billion Nara monument by the Obasaki-led PDP government. What of the Gili Gili port? The hue and cry and the media hype that greeted the MOU the governor entered into with the Chinese, Singaporean, and India interests on TV and social media, and his resort to frequent monitoring of virtual vessels coming to bed at the non-existent port has since died down. Need I mention that the Ekenwa Road, which the governor said he was dualizing because of the expected boost in vehicular traffic from the seaport to the city center, has in itself become an abandoned project. The Benin Technical College cost a do taxpayer billions of naira to renovate. It is only the governor who knows when the college will be ready to take the first batch of students. Or is it the governor's Edo best program? Which is at best a small screen to cover out the failure of the government's education policy. There are no teachers in public schools across the state. There is no school with full complement of teachers. At best, you see a principal and two teachers for a school of 200 pupils. Yet, Mr. Baseki boasts about spending billions by the grace of World Bank 
to give mobile devices to teachers to teach. Many communities employ teachers all over the state. Gentlemen of the press, the only public library in Edo State where children of ordinary Edo men and women go to read to develop themselves have been demolished and the land sold to Basaki's cronies to build the supermarket. Did we commit any offense before God? There are no workers in Edo State civil service. Yet, the governor makes monthly mountain of paying salaries as and when due. It is disappointing that rather than employing qualified personnel to fill the thousands of vacant spaces in the public service, including the health sector and the many public schools across the state, the governor, whose hallmark is the misplacement of priorities, chose to completely waste a those people's resources in the name of harmonizing his destabilized party, the PDP, by giving meaningless appointments to political jobbers, psychophants, and opportunists. Major roles in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, are in different states of ferment, dilapidation, and are forsaken by Mr. Obaseki, who annually and fictitiously budget billions to build roads and bridges or control floods and erosions. This explains our query of the 2022 budget, which on a closer look is completely un unrealistic as it is duplicitously embellished with impractical predications. The budget proposal actually shows how Gordon Obaseki waste a those state fund on frivolities. Commuters and motorists daily groan from damage to down to their vehicles from these bad roads. A state government that can barely patch an edge road cannot be expected to fix a state, not to talk of federal roads crisscrossing its territories. Mr. Obaseki once threatened to probe the Bini Water Storm project. The governor, while inspecting the textile mirror carpet on the project in Benin City, said the project was designed to work for the benefit of the Fedo people, adding that his administration will probe the project and recover all the stolen funds through it. Yet, the secretary to the state government, Barisa Saido Oji, who was in charge of the work ministry, was deeply involved in the project. And while the project was ongoing, Mr. Baseki, as the then chairman of the economic team, played the key role of sourcing the first 25 billion from the capital market through his company, AfriInvest. AfriInvest pocketed a huge amount of money as commission from the deal. The APC asked him to start the probe, but he caved in. Mr. Baseki recently claimed that he spent the last five years as state governor laying the foundation for development of Edo State. But as a party, we have looked everywhere and we cannot find any of such foundation stones. All claims of a vibrant sector-led economy, which has benefited from wide-ranging government reforms and programs, informed by insights, learning and intelligence, garnered from this sustained and evolving exchange with the private sector by Mr. Obaseki are all scams. Gentlemen of the press, it should be noted that the state of emergency in Edo will have a multiplier effect on the various operators of government in such sectors like civil service, health, education, and security of life and property, among several others, which are presently in their need of leavening. We in the APC also believe that the state of emergency in Edo will be a proactive step to flatten the curve of bad governors the state is now suffering. Thank you and God bless you all. I think the chairman deserves a louder round of applause. Yes. <laughs> the government led by Obaseki is a scam. Who can uh, ask our questions now? Just introduce yourself your media, and then you ask your question. So I think they can use their natural voice. Try and shout. If you want water, we can give you something. <laughs> <laughs> Who is fine in Yes, please. Mr. Chairman, my name is Shuni. I am really 
and write for the Nigerian Tribune. Thank you. Now, I've listened to the litany of words that you reeled out for Sanity's government. That I'm only worried about your call for state of emergency. As a Democrat, don't you consider that call as an anathema to democracy? If, for instance, you are saying that as an elected governor, Governor Basaki, quote and unquote, is this dictatorial? When you now have a state of emergency getting a soul administrator, what do you think will happen? Thank you very much. State of emergency is in, our, is in our constitution. 1999 country has amended, has a provision for state of emergency. Yeah. It has happened before, and this is not the first time we are calling for it. It happened in Plateau, it happened in Nekiti, under the current democratic dispensation. So our call is not anti-democratic. It's in line with the, party's, with the gov uh, country's constitution. Yes. So if I'm a follow-up, sir, will you consider the present condition in Edo State to what happened in Plateau and in the Kitty State? Okay. In well, fact, this is worse. Okay. Next question. No, I have a question. Ten members. Ten members. You, 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 you see, gentlemen of the press, the constitution of this country is very clear on the number of voters should constitute a House of Assembly. Minimum 20, maximum 40. As journalists, will you say that we have a State House of Assembly in Edo? Without a State House of Assembly, without the legislature, how do you check me the executive? So this type of dictatorship it's not a vestige in our constitution. You have a Muslim ruler. I think you will be helping this country, happy and do people, by doing real investigative journalism to see how we can rescue a from imminent collapse. Because power without control is very dangerous. Best. Yes, sir. My name is Ben Kibire. The issue of the local act of assembly is what I want to ask. Because I understand that the 14 members who were not sworn in approached the court. And if you are saying that uh, a door is now being run as if it were not a democratic system of government, don't you think that we're waiting for the outcome of the court to solve that problem? That's number one. Then number two, recently we also learned that the 14 members also approached the ICPC. So what, what were you expecting Mr. Governor to do? To allow the 10 others to sit at home and then wait for the outcome of the judiciary? Or I don't people will patiently wait for the outcome of the judiciary? Thank you. Thank you for that question. When I say a do state judiciary has been emasculated, I'm sure you know what I mean. The case taken to a do state high court over the last one half years has gone through eight court. It's not, it's not in the eight court. It's a desperate and conscious effort to ensure that the case is never heard. This is the eighth judge that is handling the case now. And every case will start afresh. Every judge will start afresh. That is how far Obaseki has destroyed the do judiciary. We cannot wait endlessly for a court we know we cannot get justice from. That's all. Yeah, no, okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. I want to appreciate you guys for showing up. Uh, I'm sure this is the last time we are meeting this year. <laughs> Bearing any other thing happening between today and tomorrow. If any other thing happens, we'll call you at midnight on the 31st. 
So you will come here. But thank you for coming. On behalf of the chairman, I thank all of you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you people will see Ofure. What you say is uh, we can give you Ofure. Yes, 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 yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, all my conscious Edo people. Uh, as you can rightly see from the horse's mouth, is uh, the Edo State APC chairman giving you a state of uh, the state press briefing. And just this hour, we are just aware that the governor has borrowed 25 billion, the governor has borrowed 18 billion, and all these borrowings are not in the public domain. So I believe some of you at this juncture will begin to understand why some of us on the social media space have been glamouring that those persons who represent the interests of the government of the day on the social media should come out to tell other people how our monies are being managed. As of today, as of today, for the first time, we are getting to know that 25 billion naira has been borrowed from the capital market. 18 billion naira has also been borrowed from the capital market. Now the question to ask is, where are all these investments going into? Where are all these investments going into? Is it the Gelegele Seaport? It is still under, uh, under construction or not even near construction. Where is the industrial park? The only thing you see there is the signboard carrying Obaseki's uh, face. Where is the modern estate? It is still under construction. Where is uh, the Edo Best Program? It is nowhere to spread across the look and crannies of Edo State. Where is our health sector today? We are being faced with demolition at, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, the, the Edo Central Hospital. The only meaningful thing that we are seeing the governor doing is putting street lights, and at the detriment of the cost of, 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 of wastage. Now, let me explain to you what the governor is doing is removing previous street lights and is replacing it with new ones, as if those ones were bad before. Those street lights were built by Adam Soshomole, they were in working condition, but only for us to be seen uh, in recent times that the governor is resurfacing those street lights with new ones, rather than even change the globes where the globes were still working. So, my conscience are those people. The question still asks, how prudent is the government of Obaseki managing the resources of Edo people when we are, you know, now the second most indebted state in Nigeria and there is no direct investment to show? This remains, you know, the issue that has made some of us within the past few days demand that those persons who galvanize for us as influencers on the social media for the government of the day should come out and explain to Edo people. Edo people deserve the right to know if their money is being invested properly and do not forget our properties, our properties are being sold. You heard what the state chairman just said now, that those properties are sold to Obaseki's, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, business chronics, as the case may be. The question to ask, is that how the business of governance is being carried out in developing states? Is Wiki selling the property of Rivers people to carry out projects in River State? Is a Boy State governor selling the property of a Boy State people to carry out projects in that state? This will be the discussion rocking the floors for 2022, as the case may be. You have heard it. This is one of the last times that uh, the APC will speak in this fiscal year, and we are waiting to see more formidable opposition. And one thing again, the chairman also said that for the fact that people have not heard from the party over time, it is due to the fact that they have just come out from congresses. So parties need to, uh, party organs need to, you know, uh, uh, stabilize their activities and uh, deal with issues that border on governance. As we hear this very hour, a do state is glamouring for quick and urgent state of emergency or rather quick intervention from government. On our own part on social media, is to always ensure that we take these information you know, within our local divide and put it on the global space for the world to be conscious so that your decision towards the next elections will be very informed, particularly to state executives and the state executive officer that will manage the affairs of Edo people. As of today, Edo state is the second most indebted state. What are the monies borrowed being used for? That should be 
the formation of our discussion in 2022. We want to believe that there's a robust economy, but let us see the fiscal presence. It is what we are all glad money for. Once again, for some of us on the media space, we want to say bye for now. But remember, Edo State is the second most indebted state in Nigeria and nothing to show. Bye for now. Now we don't hear from APC leaders where the Cobb Wari make a declared state of emergency for Edo State. Let us know what you think for comment session. If you never subscribe to Dan ARG YouTube, try make you subscribe so that make you for the year all the things where they happen for Nigeria. Make I leave you now with this video. Make you help us share them. Thank you for watching Dan ARG YouTube.